We are in Adelaide and very much looking forward to a resumption of play in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. The cosmopolitan coastal capital of South Australia. What a beautiful place to go racing. We've been doing it for 20 years in supercars, predating that Formula One from 1985. Home to 1.3 million people. Art, shopping, sport. St Vincent Golf to the west. Adelaide Hills behind us here. Beautiful. So describing before, yeah, together with Mark Larkham. Open. Rihanna Crean in the team with us as well. Cars now rolling out onto the racetrack. You're going to hear the word new a lot for 2018. New season. There's a new Holden Commodore. There are 13 new chassis. That represents half of the field. New war paint. New drivers. There's a new tyre. New rules. A whole bunch of new to talk about. But one thing that remains consistent is we're going to have the same old great supercar racing. Exactly the same as we left off at the end of the championship year last year when we wrapped up at the streets of Newcastle, that incredible grand finale that saw Jamie Wincup grab his seventh astonishing supercars title. 26 drivers, five of them are, as we described a little earlier downstairs, rookies, but highly credentialed. Many of your favourite drivers out there as well. Two of them have done all of these events in Craig Lowndes and Garth Tander. Jamie Wincup is the supreme victor at this location. He's got 10 race wins to his credit. So what this session is going to be all about is understanding year-on-year -year change. We've got the brand new ZB model Holden Commodore. It's going to behave differently. We've got a new tyre that Mark Larkin walked us through. It will behave differently. So will the racetrack. It's been resurfaced between turns seven and eight. Drivers will need to understand. You can actually see a little bit of the join in the road there on the exit of turn eight what the impact of that is on the grip levels of the car. Right here in the braking area to turn nine has been one of the popular spots for passing over the years and we've seen some wild stuff. Joining me once again in the commentary for 2018, looking forward to another huge season together. Mark Scaife, you've been a multiple winner at this location. Great anticipation at the very beginning of a championship season with so many wonderful things to talk about. Good morning and welcome to you. Looking forward to getting the action started. Good morning, Neil. I'm 100% with you there. I love the first session on the streets of Adelaide. It's a genuine form guide. We've got lots of tyres, lots of new cars, lots of new drivers, lots of new liveries. And the anxiousness of hanging around for the last couple of days. Drivers have been doing media commitments, sponsor commitments, fan engagement. And it's all now the serious end when you get on board and attack this place. As you just said, as a 3.22k layout, very difficult. Huge levels of commitment, very bumpy. It's the fourth bumpiest racetrack of the year. And all those road surface changes, all those curbs, all those painted lines, they are traps. And this big, fast corner that you just outlined, I love this corner. This is one of the highest levels of commitment required anywhere in the country, turn eight. And as you said, down to turn nine, one of the best passing areas. Shane Van Gisberg and the reigning Adelaide 500 champion is on screen. Turn nine. This is the new Commodore, a very different shape to the previous model. Fastback design. This is 18 months in the making, this project. Behind the scenes, it's been a dual engineering function that's been unfolding at Triple Eight Race Engineering, who are the Ripple Holden Racing Team. They've done all the homologation, the initial design work on this car and they've worked in the background as they've continued to race in one half of the team. It's about a $1.2 million investment to get the car to this point. Preston Hire have got one of them. In fact, there are 14 of these new cars in the field. Separate to that, there are 13 brand new chassis, including a brand new Nissan. There's a couple of brand new Falcons out there as well. Fabian Coulthard has one. And so Preston Hire Racing, Lee Holdsworth. There's also some very exciting news to announce a little bit later in the game when we start thinking about the Pertec Enduro Cup because already pretty much every seat has been sorted for Sandown, Bathurst and the Gold Coast. This is Autobahn Lowndes Racing. Car 888 this year looks very different, Craig Lowndes. This is 23 Red Racing or Milwaukee Racing and 230 is the number assigned to Will Davison this year. So there's new numbers and wall paint to get your brains around as well. We will too. This is Richie Stanaway, Tickford Racing. That organisation has changed its name again. It was Ford Performance Racing and then it became ProDrive Racing Australia. Now it's back to Tickford Racing. And yesteryear, when we first came here all those years ago, when Mark and I 
were sadly up in the late 90s. I drove for Fort Tickford Racing. So <laughs> got to try and assemble all that in your head. So it's like Groundhog Day, isn't it? it is. <laughs> this is turn four, Wakefield Street. Bumpy braking area, got a lot of character. There is a passing opportunity down the inside there. That's one of the great stories. Big mate racing for Todd Hazelwood, who won our development series, Super 2, last year. Was involved in that massive incident at the end of the back straight at Sandown in the endurance event. And when you see great young men and women come through those pathway programs and progress them, themselves into what is one of the most difficult and challenging touring car categories in the world, it's very good and very heartening to see that level of progression. Rihanna? Todd Kelly, now tell me truthfully, did you don a suit and helmet this morning for Friday practice? No, I actually only just flew in this morning, so uh, it's good because the first few days of standing around, um, not being a driver anymore, it would be probably a little bit harder to get used to than today. So, yeah, we're into it now. All the cars look uh, unbelievable. The guys have done a great job and um, can't wait to see how they go on the track because we've done a huge amount of work over the off-season. Yeah, we must say congratulations. The cars do look absolutely fantastic. New sponsors on board for the Nissan team uh, this year. Your role this year as a team owner is obviously going to be substantially different than it has been in years past. Yeah, it's not really changed at all back at the workshop, back at base. Um, you know, it was pretty full on for the last nine or ten years uh, back at the shop, but certainly different at the track. Um, I had to get uh, Scott Sinclair to quickly show me how to operate a headset uh, just before the session, and um, I've not really spent much time in the garage at all other than in the enduro, so it's, it's going to be a little bit of a, a learning experience for me, but uh, I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to see how Andre goes in the car and how uh, all of our cars go in general. No doubt we'll check in with you throughout the weekend. Thanks, Todd. Thanks. Todd Kelly, owner of Nissan Motorsport. Car number seven this year will be driven by Andre Heimgartner, the young Kiwi driver who drove last year in the Pertec Enduro Cup. Tim Slade, with a notable performance at the Gold Coast as we pick up number one, Jamie Wincup, locking up into turn 14. Runs wide, but not into the green stuff down there. Quite a cultural shock for Todd to step away from full-time racing and now taking up the role that he is in the garage as we pick up this as a brand new car for Cam Waters. <laughs> Monster Energy back with them and it's getting christened with a bit of energy through its body. <laughs> Just to get an opening account away. I was about to say the same thing. He's not really treating it like a new car, is he? It's straight across the curb. Uh, when we just saw Winkup go off at the final corner, he was on his best lap. In fact, he was going to go to the top of the timesheets. So Van Gisbergen, very impressive speed to start the session with a 1 minute 21.24. Lounce second, Rick Kelly third. Big run wide there for Scott. What a year he had last year. If I said to you at Adelaide last year, Neil, I'm going to have 16 pole positions and eight wins, should I win the year? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and what a year. Yeah, just an amazing finale to the way in which it unfolded back end of the championship last year. And he'll be keen to avenge that. Shane Van Gisbergen, if you recall, 12 months ago, had an unbelievable, a stellar weekend here with two poles and two victories, an absolute clean sweep. And had you done an assessment at the end of this weekend in 2017, you would have said that Shane had continued where he was from 2016. Then he had quite an up and down season. So testament to the weirdness that is this business sometimes. Car number 78 on screen. This is Simona Di Silvestro. She's got a new engineer this year. Blake Smith no longer working alongside her. Chris Stuckey will be on the radio and coaching her through the process. This year will be good now because she's repeat cycle visiting tracks that she was looking at for the first time last year. And that's always difficult. And if you recall how enthused we were about her drive in Newcastle, how much pace she showed. She now come to terms with the Nissan Altima and Team Harvey Norman backing that car once again. So it's good to have the Swiss highly copy credentialed that, female that. driver in Hold our up. field once more. And, and remember, when we were spruiking how well she was going, she was on for a fifth, a fifth position in Newcastle. She made some incredible passes down the inside of some of the real hard heads. She fired down the inside of Courtney. She fired down the inside of Slade. She fired down the inside of Garth Tander. So in terms of her... I would call level playing field performance because everybody was a rookie in Newcastle. That was a great sign of things to come for Simona. New number 
2018 for James Courtney. It'll be 25 for him. Not 22 has been the case for many, many years. Locked up in the left-hander at turn 11 for him. It's very easily done in that location around the back of the racetrack there, just near the back of the pit paddock area. And Terry Kerr's his engineer on screen there with Rob Starr in the background, who's entering season 28 at Walkinshaw Racing. He was with us, the Holton Racing team, back in the day. We missed him in Newcastle. He had some back surgery. And he's in there looking after car number two for Scott Pye, who's got a brand new car. So this team has also changed its name for the new season as well. It's now Walkinshaw Andretti. And uh, Walkinshaw Andretti United combines a whole variety of international motorsport, big names and talent when you stop and consider the Walkinshaw family history in the sport in Australia and around the world. Michael Andretti, who's here, he arrived yesterday bleary-eyed. <laughs> Saw him in the pit lane in the morning. He just come from Indianapolis. That's a fair flight. <laughs> um, and also Zach Brown, who's team principal at McLaren, but he runs a very successful sports car team with Richard Dean uh, internationally and in the UK. They were at Daytona just recently. And those forces have all combined to create this new team. So there are high expectations here with this group as well in the new season. So Van Gisbergen leads 21-2-4 from Winterbottom, McLaughlin, Lowndes, Waters, Rick Kelly, Darth Tander, Lee Holdsworth, David Reynolds, Scott Pye, and Jack LeBrock, currently 14th, is the leading rookie with a 22-7-7. This time last year, fastest time was a 20.4. Remember, we've got a different tyre, and we've also got much different track conditions today than we had last year. And year on year, there's always little nuances with street circuits, curb profiles, extra paint, different surface. The whole ability to replicate from year to year, day to day, a track condition on a street circuit layout is very difficult. And there's young Jack. He was part of the CAMS Rising Star program in Formula 41. That he's been a very competitive young man. He drove very well in the Nissan Altima in Super 2. He's got a very smooth style. He's got a style that, when you watch him inside the car, looks a lot like Jamie Winkup. Very smooth inputs. And remembering he's driving a brand new 888-built Techno Commodore. And Jack LeBrock got off to a very good start at Sydney Motorsport Park at the launch and test earlier in the year as well, a couple of weeks ago, Mark, when he wound up in eighth place for Techno Autosports. So he's taken the seat that's been vacated by Will Davison. As you said, it's a brand new car, a 888 race engineering built car. They actually built it at Banyo at the workshop. Betty Clemenko, what a year for her last year. Bathurst victory, 2017 for David Reynolds, and they've re-signed Luke Gilden. Be crazy not to, so Luke will be back in the Penride entry again later in the year. We'll be looking forward to seeing him. In the background there, we've got Michael Caruso with the drive, Nissan Altima as well. You laugh? Yeah, well, did you see what he said yesterday? We were talking to him about his new car, and he liked his new colour. And he was raving about his new colour was going to give him some speed. So I'm not <laughs> sure whether that's really right. I went and saw him yesterday afternoon. He's got new driving suits, new colours, new sponsor. Looks very good, Murph. Yeah, boys, just looking at Craig Lowndes now on screen. He's just hit the fastest first sector of the session, and uh, he was in the lane just a second ago. Made a little modification to the rear of the car, raised the right height slightly just to fix where he was through there at the moment. Complained of a little bit of understeer through turn eight. But John McGregor said that uh, the rest of the car and the comments from Craig Lowndes were very, very positive. He's gone out. He's now on a brand-new Dunlop green tyre, so that would uh, give you the idea of why he's uh, popping out hot uh, purple sectors everywhere at the moment. So keep an eye on this lap, but Lowndes, he's very happy with the balance of that car at the moment. Greg Murphy, Rihanna Cree and Mark Larkham working hard in the pit lane for us again all season long. Craig Lowndes on screen. Autobahn Lowndes racing. And the colours on that car look fantastic, and he's just gone to the top of the screen at 1 minute 21.07. Lowndes, the inaugural winner here back in 1999. Six wins, a couple of poles at this location as we pick up Jamie Whitcup, who I think has folded the passenger's mirror in yep. on the left side as well. So he's given that a rub on the wall, most likely at turn eight. eight. You and I looked at each other as soon as we saw the mirror <laughs> fold it back and went, ouch. <laughs> Will Davison, super slow-mo replay of him through turn one. And remember that when we get to qualifying later this afternoon, track limits will apply through here. So one of the other things that the teams will be doing at the moment is they'll be monitoring timing very carefully to make sure that 
the way in which you position the car between one and two is millimetre perfect because if you get that wrong, you can clean bowl yourself in qualifying and then your weekend gets off to a filthy start. So we just saw the end of that lap with the mirror folded in from Wing Cup, but it was a pretty good lap because it's at 20.8 and 14 and a half minutes into the first session and only four tenths away from last year. That's a very, very fast time. So Wing Cup 20.8, Lowndes 21.0, Van Gisbergen 21.2, Mark Winterbottom, the first of the Fords with a 21.45. Will Davison, good job. Up into sixth with a 21.75. Rick Kelly and Michael Caruso are eighth and tenth. They were third and fifth in the first session last year, respectively. So good pace being shown by the Nissans. Freightliner racing, new colours this year for Tim Slade and Adelaide Boy, car number 14. Fortunately got tangled with his teammate here, Nick Perkat, last year. New engine package for these guys for 2018. KRE engines. Kenny McNamara, the same engine supplier that's been successfully providing to Triple Eight Race Engineering over the years. So new car. This is one of two brand new cars at Brad Jones Racing. His teammate Nick Perkat has one, and they completely rebuilt Tim Blanchard's car as well, car number 21. There are three cars in this stable. Beautiful presentation, massive amount of work for these guys. All of the Holden teams have been on double time basically since we saw them at Newcastle at the end of last year's championship. 90 odd days, they've gone and built brand new cars in many cases, and it's just been an endless process. And you can see, particularly when you look up close at the rear of the car, and this is the Blackwoods car of Nick Perkat. Just how different the treatment is at the rear of the car. It's a, it's a fast back look on this car. The rear wing is very interesting, the way in which it's a two-piece arrangement that is split in its base in case you damage one side or the other. You don't have to replace the entire rear wing end plate assembly. Um, it's also split in that you can separate the, the lip of the boot from the wing as well, which will hopefully minimise pain and financial pain when you're trying to repair the car. This is the reason why that mirror got folded back, by the way. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that'll be enough. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's that's it. the limit. That's the limit. <laughs> there you go. If you were questioning yeah, whether he was committed or not. <laughs> Jamie knew it too. So it had understeer and bags of it. And he was right, he had his foot right out of the bucket. He had no throttle percentage in there at all as he tried to figure it out. Now this is also great new war paint on Rick Kelly's car this year. Castrol Racing, an unveil yesterday for these guys. And uh, car number 15, Rick Kelly at the helm again for 2018. This is a guy that's had a lot of success over here. It's the kind of event that plays well to him. He's a very fast, consistent runner, tends not to get himself in strife. And he was about as pumped up as I've ever seen him yesterday. Full of energy, very keen to get on with it. He was a winner here back in 2007. It's also had a pole position here. They've worked incredibly hard in the off-season as well, not only building a new car for Michael Caruso, but they've continued their engine development. And they're all out there trying to find what we more commonly describe as the one percenters. All out there trying to find every gram of weight, trying to find every little bit of tidy-up detail for aero, everything they can possibly do to eat performance to try and get to the top. Top time at the moment, Jamie Wincup, 1 minute 20.83 for him. He's got nine one hundredths of a second from his teammate Craig Lowndes, who in turn is just in front of his teammate Shane Van Gisbergen. So much like it was last year when Red Bull Holden Racing Team ended up being pretty quick one and two at the end of the session. Mark Winterbottom, as Mark Skate pointed out a moment ago, from then Scott McLaughlin, Will Davis and Michael Caruso, Cam Waters, Rick Kelly, Chaz Mostert. So when you look at the pace, as I said, now we're just under 19 minutes into the first session. We're only four tenths away from the fastest lap of last year's practice one. It's probably a little surprising. I, I didn't anticipate with the new tyre and the track conditions to be quite as fast as that. So it's, we're on for a hectic weekend is probably the first signal. The second signal is the first three cars as a form guide uh, the Triple Eight built cars of Wing Cup Lounge and Van Giersbergen. And then promising signs for Mark Winterbottom. I just spoke to Chas Mostert before he got in the car. And I asked whether the 
Tickford Falcons were very similar. He said all four cars are actually quite different to give themselves a read. So it looks like Winterbottom has immediately found a bit of a sweet spot with that one with car five because Moss is down in tenth. Looks like from a grip standpoint, as Mark Larkin pointed out before, that Frosty, Mark Winterbottom, likes the front grip. He likes the front of the car to work nicely as we look at Gary Rogers, who's been responsible for bringing so many of these young men through this business. And one of the guys that was originally found as a young guy from WA, Garth Tander, is now back at the team. And he's the elder statesman as a 40-year-old alongside as a 22-year-old from Victoria. And the young man, the rookie, James Golding. It's a pretty good look at the rear wing assembly on that car there as they dive in and start to extract data from Garth's car. So there's the end plate and the adjustability. And you can see the lower plane on the wing is actually a two-piece. So if we sneak around the corner here, you can see that it separates in the middle. There's a little metal strip in the center of it. So if you damage it, you can break it into two pieces. And then um, what you can't see is the way in which it attaches to the boot is the what's described as the gurney flap on it as well which just gives you extra downforce there you go there's the joint beautiful workmanship oh, gorgeous Beautiful quality yeah. the roof is as well very impressive to look at and um, looks very much like the way in which the s60 volvo was done the way there's an apron on the rear of the car david couchy was actually lead design on the zb commodore they also did a lot of CFD or computational fluid dynamics say that in the morning 20 times fast without a lot of coffee. And uh, so there was a huge amount of computing power that was involved in the process. What of does doing it do? Tell us what it does. Well, it helps them simulate the cause and effect of uh, the airflow over the car. And uh, they try and do as much as they can in bench testing. It's gone silly in here pretty early in the game, folks. And. Uh, so there was a lot of work done behind the scenes. They engaged Worth Engineering in the UK to do that, who've been involved years back in Formula One and also in big sports car programs. They've got a problem with the left rear hub here. It's easy to cross thread these wheel nuts and uh, they have an anti-seize on the hub and they coat the wheel and the nut with every application. But it's very easy with the horsepower that the guns have. If you don't feed them onto the hub properly, you cross-thread them, and that's making a lot of metal there at the moment, so that's actually a half a nightmare. But the way in which the nuts are built, they're done in such a way that it's the thing that fails first rather than damage the hub, because you get a much bigger invoice when you have to fix the hub. That's right. The wheel nut's softer than the hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so what one gets hurt. And now you can't even blame Nathan Hindmarsh and Alistair Lynch for that. They were the guys doing the pit stops last night <laughs> on the Nissan, so we can't even blame them for cross-threading anything. We thought that that was very funny. Those guys really were great sports last night doing the pit stop competition. As we look at Scott McLaughlin, a little replay now, turn four, and a big moment. He's going to make the fence. That's a little mistake. He was wide the whole time, and it comes back to this. Watch this on board now. So what actually happened is the bumps unsettled the car. So when you have to reduce the pedal force, the amount of braking that you can get done, you end up arriving at the corner too fast and the result is you go off the road. So we're looking at the cause and effect there. So the cause was really unstable over the bumps and the effect was whacking into that wall. And so they'll need to have a long, hard look at the left rear corner of that car now. Bearing in mind also that McLaughlin went into the turn one wall on the outside at Sydney Motorsport Park at the test right front tyre failed. They'll have a, a good hard look at that to just make sure that nothing's been dislodged because what they can't afford is for the wing position to change. And uh, also just look at left rear geometry as well. So he'll be pretty frustrated with that. But it started when the car got out of sequence over the bump. You can actually see it, look, it was pitching up and down quite a lot in the rear. And uh, so that's an awkward start for him. He's currently sitting in fifth position just behind Mark Winterbottom. But the interesting thing, you know, when you make that point, is it actually hurts your confidence a little bit. I mean, they're little, the little mistakes like that. That's twice exactly, and he's Here that one there was this is Percat Park. Now, whether did he understeer in too fast there and make the fence, or has he just stopped? Um, no, got no reverse. Car keeps stalling. David Coulthard did that in the McLaren. He did some years ago. Yeah, mate, copy that. The guys are running down here now. They'll try and push you back, and then get you going. 
Adelaide Flycamp on top of the spot there. So I, I don't, he may have fired in there and he was saying he couldn't grab reverse, but uh, he sorted it now. So if you arrive too hot, here's the replay. Watch the rear of the car. Right there, see the real quite a violent bump and rebound cycle over the bump. And then it's the rear of the car gets high and light. Can't stop, so you've got to reduce the pedal force. A lot of cockpit fiddling going on here as well. Yeah, no big deal. I mean, it's just a it's a flesh wound, but it's an annoyance is the point that Mark is making. It just takes minutes out of your program. And, and as I said, there's a little bit of a confidence one in it too, because you it'll take a little while to get yourself back to being under brakes as deep and as aggressive as you would like. It's a, there is definitely time to be made there. And that was a little mistake from Scott McLaughlin early in the piece, Murph. Yeah, you just see the Escapey 2, uh, they're just changing the rear dampers in the Scott McLaughlin's car. Now, they're putting back in, I don't know if they're the same ones or not, but uh, this car was in here before, before that last outing where he had that little moment. And they changed all four dampers in both McLaughlin's and Coulthard's car just before he went back out and had that little issue down there. Don't know if that's uh, related at all, but as you can see, they have actually gone and taken uh, those dampers back out and put another pair back in. So not sure what they're looking for, if that has uh, made a significant issue, but um, they are making changes there. The damage to the back of the car is very superficial, I think, at this stage. They're not looking at anything more to do with the rear wing or the mountings on the, the rear guard or the bumper. So uh, just making that one change and we on his way back out there. Yeah, so this is actually starting to hurt them on the clock. We're going back into the Erebus garage here. We had the angle grinder out a moment ago. Here we go. It reminds me I must make a dental appointment. <laughs> annual checkup. <laughs> so that's not a good sign in the middle of a practice session having to go through this process. So what they're trying to do there is effectively split the nut, pull the wheel nut off. The wheel nut, as we said, is the softer. It's a alloy manufactured machined part and he's trying to do that without hurting that hub very much so that's a, a difficult scenario now we're on board with mark winterbottom we said before with a 21 4 2 that early signs for frosty good car speed nice car balance nice flow when his confidence is up he is one of the best drivers in the field he had some better performances later in the year last year and he just has to make sure from an engineering standpoint that they've got a nice solid platform for him to exercise his craft that bump there's i think it's worse than last year Hopper. <laughs> we say that every year too that's <laughs> brendan hogan by the way on the right hand side that's his engineer at tickford racing 12 years they've had bubble backing at tickford racing so that announcement was made during the week welcoming that group back in support of Mark Winterbottom. That's a tremendous partnership. It's been very successful over a long period of time. No wins for Frosty in 2017. He'll be hot to avenge that. Sixth in the championship. Started to show glimpses of getting on top of their woes. Mark just took a step back in the commentary box then. In the back half of last year's championship, there, there were more bright spots. So that was encouraging. He hasn't always come away from this location as a happy camper either. And when you leave Adelaide and you haven't got enough points in the bank. It takes a long time to recover very often. He's qualified on the front row a couple of times. He's had a couple of second placings here, but he's never actually broken through for the win. He's currently sitting in fourth place. He's the best of the Fords at the moment. They're all having a bit of a battle. Every time we take that shot down there at the moment, they're all begging for an apex. So there's a real battle to try and get the nose of the car down there and get it online. Meantime, they're just just burning time it's away a disaster. down here at the moment. Now, yeah, finally. finally. Look at the amount of swarf and metal filing that are like on the ground there. It's like a machine shop, doesn't it? Does, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. So yeah. now they need to be very careful that when this wheel does come off, watch this, he just brushes. No, he didn't. I, I thought he, he actually made the comment over the radio that he did. The resurfacing, see it right there, is where the resurface ends. Now we're looking at the sectors from last year. Now the car's right out on the slide. Look at the dark surface that's currently under the wheels. Car's sliding, it's a little bit wide. So just outside the exit line, the perfect exit line. On the slide, a little early on the exit. And just in that last little phase, it goes so close. Another coat of paint and that would bump the left-hand rear quarter. 
on the McDonald's sign. And he actually said over the radio that he bumped the fence. So that's how close it was. I reckon a little bit of it started when he clipped the curb on the inside. inside. So uh, what he would have done there is upsized his heart rate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Very true. Because that place is totally unforgiving if you end up wiping that wall down there. We've got a lot of cloud cover out there at the moment, about 25 degrees, by the way. So track conditions are good. It's a very light breeze, only about eight or nine kilometres an hour at the moment. Quite humid, it's quite warm outside at the moment. But very good conditions. The track will still be pretty dirty, though. You can actually see evidence of it in a number of places. That in the foreground was Tim Blanchard, and now car number 99. Thermosphere backing on this car, one of the five rookies in the field, Anton Di Pasquale, who last year successfully drove in Paul Morris's entry in the Dunlop Super 2 category. He's got a bit of vigour about him, this young bloke. He drove very successfully in Formula 4. He won the Formula 4 Championship, went to Europe. Mark Larkham actually helped him a lot. And he won the Northern European Championship in Formula 4, which was one of the most difficult and demanding junior categories in Europe. So he's highly credentialed, he's very fast. He's got a bit of swagger about him. He's one of those young blokes that is not overawed by the task and the names and the demands. He'll take a few up this year. He's a funny style of guy. He drives the car beautifully. He's got really nice inputs. In fact, Dave Reynolds said yesterday that he thinks there'll be certain places that Dave actually learns a little bit from Anton because looking at his style, he's got a very smooth way of achieving the speed from the car. But in terms of his race craft, this is going to be a big step up. And for all these rookies this weekend, although we talk about this as an endurance race, this is like a very, very fast, harsh sprint race. Julian Stannard with the beard, centre of the shot there a moment ago. He's the engineer for Tim Slade on screen. And the reason we picked him up, he's on brand new tyres. Done the best sector of the session so far in the first sector. We've got eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Personal best for him in the mid sector. And you'll see that information at the bottom left of your screen. So two personal bests and a session best sector for him puts him to, uh, right up near the top. Position number three, one minute 20.9. Got probably a little more curve than he wanted through the left-hander at turn 11 there. And that then dropped it off the back of the gutter right here on the exit curb. Boys are all uh, looking to exploit the full width of the racetrack at the moment, aren't they? As we find Will Davison here, car number 230. He's currently sitting in seventh position. Now, incidentally, uh, Slade's pressed on on a second lap here, and his first sector's better than his previous lap. So we'll just keep a bit of an eye on him here as well. Milwaukee Racing, Will Davison. Tim Slade in the background. So not good enough in the middle sector relative to his own personal best on the last lap as we jump on board. Big break bias percentage change for him just then. So we're going to stay on board with him through the left-hander at 11. We'll come down to the back end of the pits, see what the end of this lap looks like. Briefly in fifth gear as he throws it up on the turn 13 curve. Feeds it a heap of gears at the lock. The rear Ooh. just a little bit. He's busy. <laughs> he is busy, isn't he? It's about four tenths down on his previous best. Isn't it amazing how Brad always wears the shirt of whichever car's going best? <laughs> he's, huh? he's got a Velcro down the back of them so he can do a quick change. <laughs> he, uh, he's been a very busy man in the last several months just trying to get those cars built, as have all the Holden teams. It's such a big engineering requirement to change all the gear. Jumping back on board now, Red Bull Holden racing team. It's a different shot, isn't it? It's Van Gisbergen. and it's much further forward in the car, the camera, and makes the activity and the look of steering position and the frantic lever work and pedal work. It's actually a great shot. This is a pretty good lap by Van Gisbergen. It might put him at Dars, and he just ran a little bit wide at the last sector. In fact, he lost two tenths on his own personal best sector three. He was going to go up in behind Winkup. So Winkup remains fastest with a 20.8, 25 and a half minutes remaining. Look at the effort. The drivers call this the staircase. There are a series of 90 degree corners. 
and you tend to corner weight the cars. We'll explain this through the course of the weekend, but you tend to weight the cars to turn right slightly better than turning left because it's predominantly a right-hand circuit clockwise direction. And then you can see this now. Let's have a listen for turn eight. He's given it away he now. He has so. too. Sorry about that, folks. I, I led you up the garden path there. I thought he was going to have an attack at that as the last one. There's a big slide for Richie Stanaway. Nice car control. And that's a little mirror removal from Shane Van Gisbergen. Huge curb usage there for Will Davison. Will's had a pretty good start to this session. He's actually finished up at the moment, still seventh. This and car, by the way, is the next Tickford Racing car. It was Cam Waters' car. Car number 55 on screen here is Chaz Mostert. Super Cheap Auto back in support of that car. Andre Heingartner, by the way, just in the background while we were speaking, has leapt up in the Nissan to position seven in car seven. This is Todd Hazelwood on screen, Big Mate Racing, car number 35. It's an ex Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske Ford FGX. Todd's the reigning Dunlop Super 2 champion. He's got tyres on, so he's cycling up for a track. It's down in 25th at the moment. It's a new machinery for him this year. He needs to understand cause and effect with the Falcon and how to get the most out of it. Matt Stone in his corner together with Jim Stone, Wes McDougall. Very experienced group of people with a lot of supercar knowledge. They eat, sleep and breathe it. In terms of curb hops, which is going to be a hot topic later in the day. Uh, on the turn two hop board at the moment, Jack LeBrock's <laughs> got the, the he's a winner. Winner. Yeah, He's the winner of that little unofficial contest at the moment. He's got six of them against his name, so that'll need to be calmed down. Have a listen now. I won't do this time. Yeah, well done. Now, he's on a very good lap here. That's the reason why we've grabbed McLaughlin. He's into turn nine, into the hairpin. Middle sector for him is the personal best. Cam Waters has gone to the top with a 20.73 in that new car from Tickford Racing. Good See start for him. The effect of new tyres here. They've got an extra set allocated at the beginning of the day. Right to the very edges of the track for him into the final corner. McLaughlin. So time looks encouraging waters is the top man at the moment he's just been displaced by mclaughlin who's done a 20.5 that's just a fraction slower than the best time in the corresponding session last year mclaughlin waters win cup and look at the ride controlled variation compared to what it looked like before there in wakefield street in the braking area don't need to be an engineer to see that it's much better than it was earlier on so that change that they made has helped the stability under brakes for that car. Coulthard's just jumped up into the 10 as well. He's now in eighth position. Wing Cup is responding. So he's gone faster in the first sector than any other as we focus on McLaughlin into turn eight once more. It's a great bit of racetrack. It's 245 kilometer an hour run in as we now find Jamie in the braking area at nine. So he's a little further down the road than Scotty at the moment. He currently sits in third place with two minutes and 10 seconds remaining in our first of two practice sessions today. Car looks good, riding the curbs beautifully. He's a little bit slower, a correction, faster than his own personal best in the mid-sector wind cup. He just missed the apex then, but it's actually going to cost him on the last corner, Neil. It's going to be very close. McLaughlin's at the top at the moment. Now wind cup eclipses. That's a time, a one minute 20.1, three tenths faster than the best last year. McLaughlin's come in. So wind cup McLaughlin waters. What David a great Couchy. session. Huh? Great session. Lowndes is in position four. Then Tim Slade, Van Gisberg and Heimgartner, Pai, Coulthard, Rick Kelly is 10th. Turn four, Chaz Mostert, super cheap auto racing. He's in 14th position at the moment. After Newcastle last year, went to Thailand, drove in the BMW GT car for a victory. Trained very hard as his dad, Ed, in the off season. Well, Chaz has trained hard, I'm not sure about Eddie. And uh, I said to Chaz yesterday, can you please eat something? Because he's just making the rest of us feel ordinary. <laughs> he's pretty lean at the moment. He's fully committed through turn eight. 
mid-corner speed at eight. It's about 220-odd kilometres an hour as we find Wind Cup. This is going to be got a very good lap. With here as he gets into the final corner. He's got Caruso and Winterbottom in the foreground. He's right in under the rear wing of the Nissan. Just got new colours with drive.com.au on it this year. So Wind Cup looks to improve. His middle sector is the best we've seen so far. And he does a mighty job for a 120.16 that was better by a whisker than his previous. He just rushed into the final corner a little bit, but Slade's on a... Oh, sorry, with Van Gisberg has done a very, very good lap also. Oh, there, oh, that's as close as you get without wiping the mirror off. The right-hand mirror's already gone. We saw that earlier. He overrun the braking area there at turn nine. He's wrecked that lap. He's about seven or eight hundredths of a second slower in sector two. He'll finish the lap off probably. Stanaway is getting a good form guide in behind there watching his compatriot Kiwi at his best. Van Gisbergen here was brilliant. Remember last year, he just missed the apex again. So the slow corners are hurting Shane Van Gisbergen. What does it do? It pops him up to third. Wow, which just demonstrates how much potential if he can stitch the lap together that he wants that is in that car driver combination because for those mistakes at turn nine and 14 for Shane, with a 20.6, he'll get that back. Nick Perkat with a lock-up at the right front tyre. Howells in protest for him in the final corner with the flag being shown to all. Man of the match, Will Davison, fourth. That's great. Excellent effort. Winterbottom comes up 16 spots in position two. So the Botlo forward splits McLaughlin and Wincup. Jamie on screen. He's got 0.2 of a second over the rest of them at the moment. Wing Cup, Winterbottom, McLaughlin, Van Gisbergen, and the first of the interlopers is in car number 230, Will Davis and Cam Waters, James Courtney, and then Tim Slade, Craig Lowndes, and Scott Pye. That's the 10. And if you questioned the seven-time champion's motivation and commitment, you probably watch that session and watch him through turn eight and have a look at that lap time. I think he's fairly motivated. He's definitely motivated. <laughs> Beautiful job. And this intense and raging battle that completed last year's championship continues. It's exactly the same. Practice one, leaderboard. Check it out, the Adelaide 500, the first of two practice sessions today. Win cup by two tenths of a second from Frosty. And then Scotty McLaughlin in position three. Shane Van Gisbergen with a couple of little mistakes on his pressure lap. Davis and Waters, Courtney Slade, Lowndes, Pye, Perkat, Holdsworth, Caruso, Rickelli, Andre, Heimgartner. So Nissan's there, 13, 14, and 15 on that practice one leaderboard. And so looking beyond these guys into position number 16, Richie Stanaway. Not a bad way to open his account, only a second away from the money. Fabian Coulthard, Garth Tander. Chas Mostert's a little further down, so it mustn't be to his liking. And last in the field, James Golding, 1 minute 22.9. This is Shane Van Gisbergen, and big moment for him in turn eight. That was a big catch, and then I think the secondary part of that was actually the battle that he had trying to get it stopped down here at turn nine. Oh, that's a fair crunch with that inside tyre wall for Cam Waters. That's the brand new car. Now looking slightly secondhand in the front left corner. Well, Jada. The one on the car, one on the first session of 2018. Motivation looks pretty good out there. Yeah, good way to start the year, of course. Um, we've been doing some pretty big work over the over the break on the on the mechanical side of things. So we're um, yeah, we're in, we're in a good place to start the weekend. He didn't do too many changes by the looks of it. Watching uh, throughout that session, car looked pretty stable and in good space early on on the old tyre, and the new tyre responded nice. Yeah, yeah, because we new new tyre, so we don't really have a batch, so we're using these old tyres. Got to be careful because the balance on them is nowhere near the same as uh, as the current batch. So uh, we just we just just kept it calm and put the new batch on, and the car's pretty good. Got a bit flighty through turn eight there, mate. Uh, early on in the piece too, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was a little bit early to scrape mirrors through there, <laughs> a little bit early. So I uh, backed it off a bit, but we're going to have to up it as the weekend goes on. Thanks, bud. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Hey, Mark Winterbottom, sorry to interrupt you with the engineer there, mate. Um, yeah, and you should be smiling. <laughs> we did a little piece at the start and. Mate, seriously, I've been really keen to see how this new tyre is going to affect Mark Winterbottom. I reckon last year's hurt you a little bit. 
you love the front of your car working. That was very impressive, mate. You must be in a good spot <laughs> early on. Yeah, I um, feel good. Um, even last year, you know, we finished off last year pretty strong with uh, provisional pole at Newcastle. I kind of wanted last year not to stop. Um, and I hate not winning. Going into Christmas, um, pretty angry, to be honest. Um, Use that as motivation. And we had a pretty good session then. But, um, you know, lots of change here as well. I've got same engineer, which is great. Uh, a new data engineer who's very good as well and um, you know we're just having a go which is nice nice to be back up the top of the time sheets although it's practice but um yeah feeling good so uh, i want to want to go racing early instinct looks good mate well done yeah, cheers buddy andre heimgartner season 2018 is officially go and uh, you've had your first hit out in the nissan ultima with your thoughts yeah, it's amazing. It's good to finally get it going. You know, months of preparation, we finally get to drive. So, yeah, the car in that session re went really well. And, um, you know, there's a lot of mistakes for me just getting back into tune with a supercar around here. And obviously, the Nissan's quite a different beast to the other ones. So, um, yeah, overall, I think it's pretty solid. And I'm really looking forward to the practice and qualifying. I'm just stoked to be back. Early morning here at Adelaide, what were the track conditions like? Yeah, it was pretty tricky at the start. Had a lot of understeer, especially through turn eight. And, um, but towards the end there, when people started truck tyres on, it gripped up a lot. So um, it was sort of, yeah, the last lap you did was going to be the best. Thanks, Andre, for your time. Cheers, thank you. And we'll see, can I just uh, quickly see if I can grab Scotty McLaughlin. The debrief is going on here with Ludo, the choir and the other boys in the team. So we'll see if I can uh, snatch him just quickly, get a quick comment. Uh, interesting session, mate, straight up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we bowled around on a bit of old tyre, so it was hard to get a feel, and the track's quite slippery. So, um, yeah, went out and on, the, on that, that set and definitely felt better. A lot more in me, but um, a lot more we need to get it out of the car as well. Yeah, a bit of uh, uh, tuning obviously going on. A few sets of dampers trying there. We saw that in the moment. Uh, I think it's on the screen there. We lost it going into four under brakes. The rear just looked like it picked up off the ground a bit. Yeah, I felt like we were very high all session. Uh, just, just like that's, that's how I, my feedback back to Ludo. So just try to get a little bit more uh, feeling in the rear. Um, but, yeah, I think the, 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 the tyre grip was definitely hurting us at that point and then when, when we fixed that up it was great but you know what it's like when you go from old tyre to a new tyre it's quite hard to get your head around straight away so and around here you want, want to just creep up on it a little bit slowly so uh yeah it's okay and comparatively to on the the new tyre as yeah. such you know the new construction design uh, based on 12 months ago how's that sort of any correlation there uh it's it feels very similar to yeah. be honest it's not, it's not much different so um but i guess i just won't pop as much thanks mate cheers